dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and welcome back Last time on Missed Opportunities, Ghosts of Salt Marsh, the party returned from a long voyage to find Salt Marsh in distress. The fish, always plentiful, seemed to have vanished. Fishermen barely able to make any sort of haul, and a storm had um, arisen around the Isle of the Standing Stones, blocking anyone from being able to enter. Nether felt a strange call to the rocks herself. Upon investigating, they found that the spirit of the island, Nether's siren patron, in fact, had awoken after hundreds of years in need of revenge against the cruel spirits that bound her to the rocks. She had shifted her song from drawing the countless fish, the song that made Salt Marsh prosperous, to one of luring evil things and ne'er-do-wells in hopes of capturing these errant spirits. Nether and the party helped this ritual along saving some children in the meantime and summoned forth three entities the devil the demon and the dead killing them all binding their spirits to the rocks so that the siren could finally be free to go to pass to the afterlife her song and her domain passed to nether Nether inherited the power of the rocks and bid farewell, at least temporarily, to her friends, to the party, and to the crew of Pixie's Fury. She knew that it would take some time to repair the mystical bonds that needed to be nurtured in order for Saltmarsh to become stable again after such a magical upheaval. So she decided to stay at the island and help the siren song return that made salt marsh such a plentiful source of income for its fishermen, for its all its people. And so my friends, that being done, that um, we will talk more about the details of the farewells at another time when our friend Sean can join us. But for now, you have said your goodbyes to Nether. The morning has just dawned. It is early dawn. You have adventured, fought, and summoned through the night. And... You make your way across the shore or across the waters back into salt marsh proper. Um, as you enter, 
salt marsh this early time more voices can already be heard even this early what had become a dead night is now a very alive morning shouts can be heard as excited fishermen are already starting to return some of the earliest out are returning with their expected bounties nets full of fish giant tuna and other types of of um hunting fish hoisted up as trophies you see a halfling child sitting fishing pole in hand um, casting a line into the river when suddenly the line goes taut the young halfling is nearly pulled into the mouth of the river by a mighty salmon before you see two of his friends run over wrap their arms around his waist heaving with all their might to keep their friend and arguably more importantly the monster salmon from getting away a jaunty optimistic clash of sea tunes echo down from the dock districts it's taken the whole night, but it does seem Salt Marsh has now reawoken to a renewed life and new optimism. But just want to be clear, um, did we come back and sleep or did we sleep over on the rock and then came back in the morning? You, we have not um, spoken quite yet of okay. what we'll sleep. Sort of, it's sort of just vague and, and in the ether. That's totally fine. It doesn't yeah, matter. you haven't. Um, um, I, I imagine that a rest <laughs> is coming soon, but at this point you have just crossed into the town and okay. are seeing all of this going on, having been up then through the I... night. I suppose we'll head back to the council chambers, uh, since a report will be necessary. Um, and see if anyone official is present there, and if not, we'll just go bang on Anders' door and bug him. Well, uh, Maria, did you, did you happen to notice what happened to that, um, staff thing? Um, I, I, I was kind of a giant ape, and wasn't paying attention at the time. Do you mean the one that we took from the Driftwood Throne or the one that... Uh, yes. Nether ended? Okay, it's Nethers. Okay, okay, so we're not returning it to the throne. Yeah, but they didn't really know it was there, so, like, who the fuck cares? Yeah, fair enough. Just checking. Yeah. Nah. And if there's, like, a gap in there, you know... It's, uh, it's our throne! We can do whatever the fuck we want with it. Meh. Okay. <laughs> My chair. <laughs> I don't have a problem with this. This sounds like a solid plan. Just Oy. ours now. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, is the council still in the ch council chamber or do we need to go track people down? So it is early morning as you approach the town hall. Um, and uh, in there you see that only the militaristic noble looking visage of Eleander Fireborn is there bent over a few maps and some papers writing um, well, scratching out some letters what looks to be just administrative work sitting at the table he looks up to you well, it sounds like from what's going on from the docks, you all were successful. Yep. All taken care of. Kids back safe. No one important dead. Or otherwise. Sorry. That's very vague, because technically three creatures are dead. No. How many? Five. Um, and I, I'm <laughs> rise a little bit more rambly and a little bit, like, more than normal. Um... But, uh, yeah, so everything's taken care of and we're fine. And so we're going to go to sleep. Yeah. Well, we took care of two of your problems. Uh, yeah. yeah. Two. So all the fish are fine. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Fish, lots of fish. Uh, no more uh, storm. No the vampire. Storm, no that was a problem. And, uh, oh, yeah. The vampire's dead, too. Hey, look at that. Well, 
Boom. Dead again. You would assure us it wasn't a problem, but you have ended him for good this time? Yeah. Well, it was more of a, like, uh, we kicked him out of Salt Marsh and had it on pretty good authority that he wasn't going to come back. But then, surprise, surprise, the spell that was built into your little rock over there summoned him back. And whoop de doo we actually killed him. He's burnt, dead, done. A spell built into the rock? What yes. exactly is going on out on that island? Can, Nothing. Now that's can, the point. Can we like? Right, right. Can, can we? Can we like put a pin in that? Mm. And it's just a lot. Suffice to say, we're safe. You're safe. Everyone's safe. It's all taken care of. We have your word on that. And the creatures I mean, that were coming out from all sides, the dead things, they will leave. Pretty They've stopped sure coming that. at least come the morning. Where that's that's a good sign. Hi. Brutathan. <clears throat> I understand we have some sort of arrangement. I will see that any damages to your ship are immediately taken care of on behalf of the council. Thank you. It will take a few days. I saw it coming in. You had a rough patch of it, at least. So there it would seem. There's shit out there, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Giant. It seems to come to you, for better or for worse. Yeah. Killed that big dragon out there as well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's the... The, the... the sea serpent, yeah. Yeah. Ah, a sea You're serpent. Welcome? A dangerous foe. But you've it's dispatched it. All the better. Well, go on then, I can see you're exhausted. Thank you for your, your report. Goodbye. Have a nice day. <laughs> Bye. <clears throat> and uh, he dismisses you, which feels weird. He's he's an elder member of the council. Um, no, no, no. We dismiss part of the Waterdeep loyalists, but exact loyalists. Yeah, but. Uh, he still kind of gives you this sort of vibe of okay, you can go now, despite it's the like, fact that you sit on a chair, you, you sit on the council as an equal to him. But he still it's has like old this old money grandpa. Uh, ka, like, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. very much, like very much feels that same way. Time every day. Okay. He does, in fact, have some tea right next to him. That. as he is writing but you leave into the morning the sounds of the town grow more fervent louder there are already people getting drunk again in the empty net and the town is back to life ah uh, yes the proper state of things slightly sloshed at minimum mm. priorities mm hmm so, back to the ship for a rest, I take it? Yeah, and uh, before, I, uh, before I go to sleep, I, Mariah will take a, a little bit of time to do some accounting and make sure that the cut of gold that goes to the crew is um, separated out, and I'll hand it off to um, Dagon uh, to make sure it gets distributed take care of that business and then then all right as you are heading back towards the ship um you do see a familiar person sort of wave the group down the red Red tiefling, immaculately dressed, her name, Captain Zendros, waves and requests just a moment to speak with Inaris and Talise, saying the rest of you can carry on if you wish. He's out of fun, bye. Oh, bye. Oh, we, we need to come see you anyway, but we'll do it in the morning. 
<laughs> she nods. the morning. Prion. <laughs> That's the right. The seas have been kind. Lots of treasure. <laughs> Nene, why do I feel like a bad student getting called into the principal's office? Exactly it's because you're muted. Happened. Okay. That you're not. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> she waves towards you and says, let us uh, speak more of this inside, away from... She gives a toothy smile. Listening ears. Oh. Gestures for you to join her inside the shop of the faithful quartermasters. Warm fire, casting light across the room, trinkets set up across tables, beautiful art adorning the walls. It smells just slightly less like fish, which is a really luxurious thing here in Saltmarsh. Do you care for a cup of tea or something like that? You look quite tired. Take it. Ale, if you've got it. Okay. And she waves a hand and a um, halfling man in an apron goes and brings you an ale. Anything for Talise? No, I'm good, thanks. No, nope. Brings Inaris mm -hmm. a uh, ale in a Tall, fluted glass, mm -hmm. different from how you're, not usually how you drink it. Ale from a glass seems unnecessarily fancy, but there it is. <laughs> and she sits occasion. across from you and says, The word about the two of you is spreading fast. I know exactly, well, I know generally what you did in Baldur's Gate, and I can keep a lid on it here. I can buy you some time, but it is going to be very expensive. How expensive? Well, The patriarchs are not easy people to dissuade from doing what they want, and, well, the information has been disseminated along the black network as well. Hmm. One of your ears is worth at least a thousand gold to any one member of the Centaurum. Hey. Well, shit, I'd almost cut it off myself and just turn it in. I, right? That's... Almost tempting. Not, so almost. You hear out the ear hole. Yeah. <laughs> I can buy you some time, but there is something. My price is a favor. Great. What is the. What kind of favor and when? Something you are uniquely equipped to take care of. You have paid me so much gold already. It's. Uh... It's a small thing compared to influence, power, and favors from capable ones like yourself. There was a wreck a few years ago. I think we have just located it. A ship that was uh, called, called uh, the Marshal. Worshippers of the god Tyr. Missionary types were hauling a master crafted statue of Tyr himself. Some say has, well, highly magical capabilities linked to the sight of Tyr himself. I want this. I want you to bring it to me. Or some might just know that there are some very, very precious ears sleeping here in Salt Marsh. So you want us to steal 
an entire statue. Do you want me to just put it in my pockets? How the hell are we supposed to get this without being noticed? I'm pretty damn quite amazing, frankly, but I have my I do limits. Not, quite frankly, I do not care how you do it, just that you do it. And uh, once it is with me, it is a little problem. But uh, it is not so much a stealing, I don't think. It was a shipwreck. So, okay. think of it so as a will... salvage. Right. We will recover this item from the crash. What about anything else that we might find? And then my other question is, why haven't you done it? If you really want it. This is how I do things. I am doing it. Mm. You do this and you get to not be on the run for a little while longer. You get to have your bounties not increased. Hmm? What are you going to give us to assist? I hear you've gotten plenty already. Hmm. Fantastic. This is going to be a great week. Good luck. Refill. Re refill. Yeah. She's she's going to need it. Okay. And she waves over. The uh, halfling brings sort of a large jug and she says, That's you can have the rest. Leave it with her. And they, you have about a half gallon clay jug yes. of a fine <laughs> sort of clear type of ale that you've never seen before. That's uh, got this cleaner, crisper taste than most of the rough sort of farm ales that you've had in this area. Delicious. Hmm. That stuff's pretty good. Uh, thank you for the jug. <laughs> so the plan is go to the shipwreck, steal the giant statue, hope nobody notices, bring it back to you. And we don't have to be on the run for as long. The plan is bring me the statue or the Zentarum knows that they are biggest payday in decades is in the smallest town me. along the sword coast. I think I think my one big question though was what happens if we find anything else? Do we have to give everything else that we might reclaim to you as well? Not of my or concern. Just... Oh, okay, good. Good. Fantastic. I've given you very clear instructions. The yeah. details are inconsequential to me. Perfect. Deuces, Talise. Let's go. Bye. Nice to be business. Bye. <laughs> I grab my jug. I just get up and walk out. <laughs> and she sits watching you leave. Her smile seeming more sinister than you remember it previously. <sighs> and... As she was watching you and speaking, there was something, both of you are wisdom characters with high passive insight, I would assume. Ah. There's just this feeling like she understands you more than you're comfortable with. It's just, uh, whatever way she speaks to you makes you feel uncomfortably seen. Let's put it that way. It makes you feel very seen. And the door closes behind that. you. You can Great. rejoin your crew members back at the Pixie's Fury. Is everyone just crashing for a rest? Yes. I am going to, uh, when I get back to my room, I'm going to sit down and pen a quick note and have one of the crew members deliver it to Mariah. Ooh. Okay. And then I'm going to sleep. I'm drinking my ale and then I'm going to sleep. The uh, crew member will ask if she should wake Mariah in order to deliver it. I don't really care what you do. Just get it to her. Just like oh. wait. She's never happy. It's better to just let her sleep it off. 
like slip it under the door or something. You don't have to wake her. Okay. She needs to sleep. The uh, young dwarf, she looks kind of around nervously and you can hear down the hold a little bit as, hey, um, Grimlock, I'll give you, I'll give you a gold piece if you deliver this to her. I just don't want to wake her. You just hear a grunt and um, the, the sound as if a someone has snatched away a piece of paper. Oh, oh okay, thanks. Um, I don't think it's urgent, but regardless, I don't want to be the one that wakes her. And the ship gently rocks in the key, along the key, and you can all have your long rest and recovery Woo. from your ordeals. And mid-afternoon comes, still day left, enough to feel fully rested, but uh, not like you've completely wasted the whole day, rolls around. Um, and upon waking, Um, Corinne, you are awaked in your bed by a <laughs> pounding sound on a door. And you shoot awake somewhere that you swear you've dreamed about. Maybe you've been here before. You're not sure. But you are definitely in the cabin of a ship comfortable bed and a knock comes again at the door and I feel around the space a little bit uh, okay this is fine well it's probably just a dream anyway go to the door Get up. Um, you go and so you unlock the door. You see there are um, a number of documents, a, what looks to be maybe a captain's log, open up on the table. There's a beautiful violin sitting on a stand. Um, and the door swings open, and you see this giant, shirtless, muscled orc staring you in the face. Or at least half orc. <sighs> and holds out a piece of paper to you. Ah, a missive. Thank you. I'll take the paper and I'll close the door. <laughs> mm. All right. All right. Mm. Open it up. Oh, gosh. This handwriting Daenerys, terrible. what does the note say? Did you send that in uh, to her in chat? <laughs> I, I, I did, got, but... I um... <laughs> okay, gotcha. I would, I'm... I understand none of this. <laughs> okay. <sighs> All right, well, we're just going to have to talk our way through this. All right. I'm on a boat. There's a violin musician. There's a fancy hat. Captain. I start pouring through all the papers on the desk, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. I need context okay. immediately. Yeah. Make an investigation check. Delightful. Ooh, 16 on the die. Plus eight is a 24. Wow, excellent. Um, you learn Mariah Nerdras, the sea ghost Formerly named, was the former name of the ship, now renamed the Pixie's Fury. Definitely the captain. You guys have done well. You have been traveling. Ooh. A lot. That is and terribly you exciting. are able to pick out some names that seem important. Dargan. Talise. Nether. Melvin. Uh -huh. Prion. Okay. Neris. Ah, in Neris. Okay. That must be the same person who wrote this note. And a few very minor details, which I'll allow you to um, 
uh, sort of select. Another knock at the door. Captain. Yes. Are we going to be running up the mizzens or the fours for this one today? Um. <laughs> whatever you think is best. Um. So the fours. I wrote, I go over to the door and I open it. Who am I looking at? Uh, a um, stocky dwarf. Shoulders so wide, he almost looks like a square. But um, uh, you're not exactly sure who it is. There are some other crew members that are stepping about that ref kind of um, acknowledge him with some sort of deference. Um, one of them seems to refer to him as... Uh, uh, um, as Dargan. Ah. Sir Dargan, I imagine that you're a very capable soldier and sailor and thus are well within your right to de decide whichever way you would like to go on this. Um, I'm in the middle of some very important investigative uh, paperwork here. And so if you'll just give me a moment, um, I'm going to go finish taking care of that. And then if you definitely need something, um... Well, I suppose you can come back and ask, but, um... Are you okay? Do you need a bottle of something or something like that? What, uh... Bottle? Yeah. I think there Your are some in the cabin, but I'm okay. hands shaking like they usually do in the morning, and... I think it's the afternoon. Right. Well, well, okay, we'll run up the fours and uh, leave you alone then. Delightful, thank you. What the fuck? He says as he turns around. <laughs> All right, lads, we're running up the fours this time. Captain's orders. As they start to begin lowering and repairing some of the um, uh, sails on the foremast. Um, <clears throat> who is first up on deck? Probably me. Um, you would probably be doing bosun's duties, hauling the tackle back and forth, making sure the ropes are in good order, making sure that the um, the new sail that's been brought in has been um, properly rolled, properly uh, furled, and such. And so, um, as you are helping with some of those operations, as you see Dargan come up to you. Um. So. Uh, everything go okay out there last night? I know I heard about Nether, that's terrible, but, um, really though, uh, specifically the captain, is she okay? Aye. Why shouldn't she be? Just acting a little odd is all. Um. Was she drinking last night? Oh, that's what I mean. I don't think she's drunk at all today. It's afternoon already. Well. And she sounded really pleasant. Like, old dainty like. She called me sir. The fuck kind of game is that? Take over for me. I'll go and have a check. Eight. And he starts taking over exactly what you were doing. I'll go and knock on the door. Mariah! No response. <laughs> I knock again, and then I see if the door's open. It's unlocked. <laughs> you... I'll open it slightly. Are you sleeping? Uh, you see Mariah standing over the table. Um, she has a notebook in hand and she has all of the pagers that are normally sort of like splayed out everywhere 
on her desk and various side tables, like very meticulously organized into piles. Um, and she seems to be writing down something in a notebook and is occasionally sort of like chewing on the end of the quill feather. <laughs> mm. Huh, good afternoon. You, you have dog and worried. Are you okay? You seem okay to me. Um, Tarkin. Yes. Is he still confused about which thingamajigger to put up? I missed the words. There was a there was an option A and an option B. And he was asking me about which one to do. And honestly, I wasn't entirely sure. That question is a little bit outside of my prerogative. Um, prerogative. However... What if you ever use that word? I use plenty of big words all the time. Don't worry about it. Do you need a drink? Whatever for. Well, you're usually half slush by now. Am I? I sort of look down at myself. Oh, um, I suppose I should. If we're going to be following proper procedure here. Ah, I see. Um reach down uh, and grab a half open or ha half empty bottle of some horrible liquor that Mariah keeps in the cabin. Flick off the top. Bottoms up. <laughs> Chug and then immediately <laughs> cough and spit some of it back out. Yum. Delicious. Thank you. Oh, actually, I do have a question for you. So, um, how... How many more of these obelisks are we looking for again? That's a Melvin question. Okay, well, that's clearly at the center of this whole puzzle situation. So can you please make sure that he knows that I would like to speak with him if he's the expert on this subject? Why don't you go and see speak to Melvin? I, I'm I'm still indexing. Indexing? What the fuck? Yeah. I am the captain, am I not? You've never thrown your weight around like that before, though. Regardless if you're captain or not. To be honest, there's not much weight to throw around here, but sure, if that's the turn of phrase you would like to use. Hmm. What if I said I was a captain? Um, evidence to the contrary. I have the cabin. And the hat. Very true. Very true. I will go speak to Melvin then. You do know who I am, right? Yeah. Who? <laughs> a brief moment. Hold on. I'm just going to roll a quick check for her. Yeah, go please roll another investigation check to see. <laughs> this is sort of a mental like <laughs> recall moment that I rolled a natural one on, <laughs> on my die you in front of know. me. So I I am Saran. <laughs> <laughs> one of the fish ones. <laughs> you know, it's not coming to me right now. Uh, okay. I'll go and get Melvin then. Captain. And I'll head out the door. Not Captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um. And Eris, until Melvin, he's Melvin has you, disappeared briefly. He, he'll be I, I understand <laughs> that he has to do something. Um, and Eris and Talise, what are you doing in the meantime? Just, and I figured I'd wander up top and be like, hey guys, how you doing? Well, you see all you the know? work going on. You see Prion leaving the cabin, um, sort of going to look around. You see him leaving the captain's cabin looking maybe a little bit bewildered. Um, I mean, it's, it's Prion, right? 
<laughs> I love you. <laughs> Prion um, usually seems pretty quite level. determined. There is a yeah. big furrow in his brow this morning. Um, <laughs> have, you had your, have you had your coffee, Prion? <laughs> I've got coffee for you. <laughs> Hey, Prion. Uh, you're looking particularly unpleasantly confused. What's up? It's hard ah. to say. Okay. Let, let's say. Mariah? Yeah. I don't know if she hit her head during the night. But she doesn't seem like Mariah. Mariah, not Mariah. Got it. Do you think she got really, really drunk and like fell off her bed and... No, she definitely like, wasn't drunk. I didn't smell nothing. Like... In fact, she, she say any... almost yeah, scoffed yeah. At, the, at the alcohol. It was like she'd never drunk before in her life. Okay, okay. Um. And Dargan said she called him sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she hasn't sir. got a clue who I am. Hmm. I've got a good idea. Come with me. I'll go back and knock on the door. Where are you? I'll go answer it. Here's Melvin. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Melvin, it is a awesome. pleasure. I have a question for you. Okay. So my understanding is that we have two more of these obelisks to find. And okay. if we are to go off of the clues that we've received thus far, there is a short list of specific locations that I think that they might point to. Okay. However, uh -huh. I might need to consult some of your books. And uh, there is a specific, I have this vague recollection of some sea tale that mm. my father told me once. And mm. um, it might have something to do with the blue gull situation. You okay. see, as, as, as uh, Mariah says <laughs> that, you see a couple of sailors in passing that kind of like, um, and they spit on the ground, stomp on it three times, and then do a little like hop back and forth and then go around their, um, their duties. The thing is, Mariah, well, you've, got, you've got Melvin confused because Melvin doesn't read or write. I collect the books because I think they have something in there. I just don't read them, but I'm sure that there's something in there, but writing or not, I actually do know about one of the locations. I don't know if it's come up in your research, but kind of, you know, through back channels and things that we don't need to go into. I do oh, know okay. that there is likely to be an obelisk kind of near uh, what's supposed to be a shipwreck that you might already know about because there's apparently a, a statue that's trapped in the wreckage. Okay. And I think there's a good chance that one of the obelisks might be down there. And we could go get the obelisk for us and then maybe sell the statue to one of our contacts in town. Do you know the provenance of the statue? Yes, Melvin. It is, it is shipwrecked, so it is public access. That is not what I meant in the slightest, but I see. I can't point. read books, so I don't know the word provenance. I look over at Priyan. I thought you said that he was the smart one. I said no I such can thing. I hear you. I have, I have the books and the records and the contacts. That's all. And you're not but you quiet can't enough read for me them. to not hear that. No. What matters is that so I can get them for you. how do you know what you're collecting? How do you know what you see in a book is true? You have faith in the contact. In the author. In their research. I think that the point that I'm trying to make here is that if you are incapable of reading the words on the page, you are incapable of indexing them properly such that you know their contents and connect and can make connections between the two points. 
Well, that's that's fine, but I didn't cite a book for this. I cited my contact in the black market here in town. You're the one that asked for paper trail, which is what I'm assuming provenance means. If that if that solves it for you, I'm not this hired is a very here. Like strange to, puzzle. Mm. All right. Well, um, thank you for your um, time, Melvin. Um, and I'm going to finish up a couple things and then we'll go see this black market contact of yours, shall we? Uh, no, because they will get really mad and probably stab you and maybe me. Oh, that seems rather rude, but okay. It's black. It's the black market. That's there's a reason that I'm the only contact with this person. I don't really trust anybody else. And I knew oh, them before well. I came to the Pixie's Fury. But, you know, that's just I, me, Melvin. I will make no assumptions about your relationship with any contacts, black market or otherwise. Um, okay. But in any event, I'm going to finish up my index. Oh, I will be with you. Momentarily. One second, Mariah. I, mm. There you are, Prion. And I'll look to Melvin. <laughs> I'll call him over. <laughs> Prion, the captain wants to talk to you. Um. Hi, Prion. Oh, oh, okay. Hi. Hey. I didn't say that I wished to speak with him. Oh, well, Prion knows about books and stuff. Oh, mm. do you, Prion? Well, hold on. Mm. Wait. Prion can read the books that I collect. Prion? Prion is a fisherman. We're on a boat. Anyone can fish on a boat. Hi. Prion likes his fishing. Prion? Pri yes? How much fishing experience do you have? Well, um... That, that depends on which type of fishing you're talking about. Um, I do... Uh, I, I, are, you, are you looking for uh, fly fishing or uh, straight line fishing or deep sea fishing or um, uh, bait and lure fishing or... <sighs> this is all rather confusing. You know what? I'm going to go finish my stuff. You all just go back and do whatever it is that you normally do. Um, and um, good day. Close the door. <laughs> hey, Melvin, how you doing? What What's going on? We'll walk away okay. first. <laughs> yeah, let's go and take some fresh air out okay. on the deck. What happened By last night? I don't remember. None of the demons or anything did anything to Mariah, did they? I don't think so. Because that isn't Mariah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. She thinks I'm you. She thinks I'm Serayan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is she She's not drinking? She's D -D -D calling... No. no. Hmm. Like, she, she's not drinking. She doesn't like to drink. Apparently. I... Uh, did you see in the did you see in the cabin? It's all neat and tidy and uh, uh. it's it's very you, which is great for you, but it's not Mariah. Right, but I'm not living in that cabin. So Right, you're not Mariah. Maybe I am Mariah if you're ah. Melvin and T Serene. No, no, you're Prion. I, I think you're you're looking too deep into this now, Melvin. You're gonna confuse yourself. Oh no. <laughs> um, I was trying to catch we... the captain out. Yeah. But Tilly's here just went and told our captain, who's not our captain, yeah. probably everything the person needed to know. So well done, no. Talise. Please, do, I made up half of what I just she's... said. It's fine. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do you think she's under some sort of spell or something? I, I could I'm try to wizard. detect magic. It's not something that I felt anything coming off of her, but you are probably better at that than I am. Um, okay. Um, well, do you have the ability to remove curses today? Because um, I don't think so. I mean, I can try to figure out what's wrong with her, and then, you know, I, I, I don't have the ability to remove a curse, but I could, you know, de at least detect what's going on and try to figure it out for us. Um, I suppose we could always take her to the Temple of Valcor to Valcor? It's yeah, so I I Whichever definitely the one is in town. Alcor. It's, it's 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 the Temple of Falcor. He's a new god. He's a lucky <laughs> man. 
<laughs> Question DM though. Um, we could tell her Obviously, when we were there, when she gave the blood, did we see all that? I can't recall. The work must be done. Do, do we? Sorry. Did we see all that when she, obviously when she gave blood? Yeah. We in, yeah. So we saw all that. Yeah. 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 That yeah. was right in front. Yeah. Well, um, why don't we go back and sit her down, and we'll we'll do a little bit of investigative work, I guess. Okay. Just so you know, um, I told her that there was an obelisk at this shipwreck that I know about, actually, and it is a real shipwreck, Prion, but I don't know anything about connection to obelisk. I just kind of wanted her to stop asking about it because that was what she asked about. Oh, yeah, she wants to know about the obelisks. Not Mariah wants to know about the obelisks. She's indexing about the obelisks. Okay, interesting. Like she wanted to know how many we were still looking for. She wanted to know about some of the possible locations. So I mentioned the shipwreck, which I think we should do unrelated because there could be a lot of cool stuff down there for us to sell and give to the crew. But I don't know anything about an obelisk connection. And she thinks I'm you and that I collect books even though I can't read them. So I'm sorry. I can't okay. read. I can. I know Why you can. You okay. Can't. Okay. I'm, I'm... All right, let's let's go back and find out what's going on. What's actually going on this time? Hi. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, okay. I go get me. Nay, 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 nay. Wake up. Wake what? Up. What do you want? There's something really fun and exciting and weird and possibly evil happening on the ship. <sighs> So if you could, you know, gather yourself and then come along. And I'm pretending to be Melvin. Oh, and I'm you're a still you. Flying pony. Fine. No, you're you. It's <sighs> fine. And you and you have a half orc boyfriend who loves you. See, things aren't that bad. <clears throat> Did he say something? I'll no, he said it with his dressed. eyes. <laughs> It's I'm also still because squashed. he's mute. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a tongue. He just was like, oh. he just was like, bleh, bleh, bleh. and I knew with the the look of of half orc love in his eyes. But yeah, get ready, get dressed, get wonderful. Um, come and meet us out at the captain's cabin right now. Oh, okay, bye. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh my god. While this I'll conversation hurry, is happening, Melvin is papering his glasses, um, casting detect magic as a ritual. Okay. I'll just collect Cursing, my things and go. Them, and go meet them. <sighs> you guys can wait the requisite time for Melvin's ritual to go off and then... Pound down the captain's cabin door once again. Not, 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 so, not. Maybe not pound. Not, 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 not. <laughs> yes. Hello, captain. Hello. Hi. Priya, would you like to say something? Oh, um, and captain, you know, we brought in Orgnak for you. To hang out because we thought Orgnak might help. Okay, right, Orgnak? this is very, very silly. This is obviously Nene. <gasps> Who's Nene? Oh, 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 you mean that little upstart down in the dungeons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on. <laughs> all right, this is just entirely ridiculous. All right. Uh, you don't you like our pranks the most that we always play? You've probably figured out by now that we know you're not the captain. Now yeah. take a seat, lass. Thanks. Please. I'm the captain, obviously. Aye. That is the okay. that is the role that I play in this you're the scenario. Lower, you yes. are the lowercase captain. You are not our captain, Mariah. So if you could stop playing your silly little pretend catch-up game, stop indexing, 
sit down here for two seconds and we can actually talk to you. And as the quartermaster, I can remove you from your seat as captain. So please sit down and shut up. I'm fairly certain that amongst all of the rules that you have established on this ship and all of the rules that I know to be commonplace on ships such as this, there is no such rule. Um, it would require a much greater authority than that. No, um, I'm, I'm on the same level as you. I hate to point that out. You um, man the crew to say and that I man you the individually. Ship. No, I mean <laughs> as quartermaster. My Sorry. point simply being that if you were to remove a captain from their position of the ship, it would require more than a simple individual discontent. Mm. Okay, so I'll just tell them, I'll tell all the crew who have seen you acting weird that you are not mm -hmm. the captain and they'll remove you from power and then put me in charge because our first mate is gone. So I'm next in line. Huh. Huh. She has a point. Huh. This isn't some sort of like rule of blood, you know. We're on a pirate situation. ship. Do you understand we're on a pirate ship right now? My understanding is that this was once a pirate ship that has been uh, reconstituted and uh, rechristened as something under an authority. And I point up to the flag. Um, but that is neither here nor there, as um, I am getting a little bit closer to solving whatever this puzzle is. And clearly, whatever um, social situation is at hand here is simply not worth my time. So I try to mm -hmm. shut the door. Nope. I, I big, do try to shut the door. You're getting so a big a... armored. We're going to be a big armored boot right in the doorway. <laughs> what should I roll for my foot? <laughs> Is this uh, a contested like dexterity checks or something? Probably contested athletics. Shoving um, my boots. Athletics? Okay. Can I use acrobatics? <laughs> ah, hey. Slamming a door shut is a pretty, pretty Being uh, fast. textbook athletics. Okay, fine. Yeah. That's can I can oh. I put my hand out? Could do a backflip afterwards. Well, I rolled a natural athletics. twenty. <laughs> now I want to. Uh, now I'm trying to imagine you going door slam backflip simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like I said, I rolled a natural twenty, and that is a plus two, so a twenty-two. Well, okay. I almost rolled animal handling on D and D Beyond. So <laughs> <laughs> let's see how you deal with uh, that door. Yeah, I was asking if I could put my hand out and stop the door as my well. Well, she is forcefully shoving it shut with a 22. So that is a fierce slam. So if both of you are trying to yes. stop it, um, it's kind of one of those situations. One of you can roll with advantage or you can oh. each roll separately to try and stop the door from crashing shut. Well, I already the two rolled. of you being up front. I roll. Okay. Uh, is it athletics, yeah? Yep. Uh, Did I roll athletics? The door slams shut in your faces. Cool. So let's board up the door. Melvin, did you see anything? I don't know. Did I see anything, DM? Did, did you pay attention and look? <laughs> I, was, um, I was looking to see if she had any magical auras other than her magic items. No, it's not. Um, okay. Uh, it's not different from what you've seen of Mariah recently. Um, oh, maybe I, just I a bit like more word. intense. Like there's say, a feeling um, like she's really, really there, <laughs> I, I guess. Um, okay, one, one second. Um, and I'm going to manifest the spell book mm -hmm. as a okay. bonus action. Uh, it is a tiny object. Um, it should be able to fit through either the keyhole or under the door easily enough. It has done that in the past. Um, I'd like to send okay. it into the room. Keyhole, and I'm sure. going yeah, yeah. And I'm going to cast uh, identify as an action. My one ritual spell as an action. Per I think that's how that works. Let me double check that. Uh no, normal casting time rather than ritual. Never mind. That's a 10 minute thing. Well, I'd like to look through uh, the um, spellbook either way and see if I can get a better look at her and figure out what she's doing while she's in there. Sure. Make a make a perception check. Sure. She's indexing. <laughs> Which I love that as a verb. It makes me so happy. Clearly. 
Uh, that's a 19 <laughs> total. Okay. Um, Corinne, do you care to describe your mannerisms, actions, and sure. what might be going, so... especially where it might differ <laughs> from Mariah? Um, so she's standing up very, very straight. And again, she's sort of got one book in hand with the, and is sort of like, gesticulating a little bit with the quill you actually can hear her talking in a sort of a low tone um like talking through her own thought process and whatever is in front of her you can see she's got now at this point she's got like some maps laid out on the table with several documents um closely nearby and has several tools, um, navigation tools laid out um, and seems to be walking through some, like talking through some um, like uh, triangulation mathematics. Um, and she, you hear her say like, oh yes, of course, that must be it. Is that sufficient father? No, obviously not. Otherwise there would be a reply. Okay. <sighs> Gosh, this one is stupidly complicated. And there's sort of more of a talking through various things related to maps and numbers and obelisks. Mm. Did she get into some bad ale? I think she might be sober, but, and it seems like this is Mariah. She's not under the effects of any spells. Is it Mariah? Or did Mariah, like, have a mental break and it's somebody else? Good question. She was really Not close with Nether. Sure. I mean... True. Um, hmm. Melvin... That's not my special area. Uh, please make an uh, Arcana check. Just for okay. some... Just a little information check here. Yep. Um... 15. Okay. Well, this is dealing with past experience anyway. In the case of Prion's axe, for instance, mm -hmm. you remember you saw the magic from that, and even after identifying that, you know that there are some magics um, that are beyond, uh, like, spell casting that are different than that, that are not immediately visible. Um, some things such as curses would not show up as a magic aura can be hidden and more deep seated and environmental. Um, it's a, it's not, they function on sort of a different frequency of the weave that's sometimes hard to see with these types of spells. It, it could be a curse potentially. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I will say that Mariah's talked about the fact that she doesn't have a father before and she was just talking to someone she was calling father so it's kind of seems like there might be another personality soul thing currently in control i, I don't know i can jump in really Five. briefly um at you then melvin i don't know how how constant your connection with your spell book is, is but at some point you might hear or see her turn around and she says oh well aren't you adorable and like goes down to like examine it very closely and like poke at it slightly with the end of her quill <laughs> how could this have happened oh. one of the demons devils i or she just had a the mental vampire? snap i mean she's got the sword right it could be that. I, I don't know. Did she mm. get into anything? Was she possessed? Um, the the spell book is gonna come and sit on your shoulder if you'll let it and just stay in oh. contact with you. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is new. All right. Um, well, you can stay there. Y you don't happen to know trigonometry, do you? No, no it doesn't math. react. <laughs> Ugh, fine. All right. Um, well. Just stay there then. And with that permission, I am going to cast Identify through the spell book. While in contact with Mariah or whoever this creature is. 
Probably won't tell any me, me anything I don't already know, but worth a shot. Hmm. If you instead touch a creature through the casting, you learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. Um... If you will permit me a, a moment. Oh, no worries. And that is using my... You've heard uh, of... Awakened Spellbook. Yeah, you've heard of some spells beyond your casting for the or your ability to cast for the time being um, that can... Um, actually sort of, I guess, swap souls from bodies, one of which being Magic Jar. Um, you're aware of this spell, and while this is certainly not the case for Mariah, you sense that there's um, at the moment something similar to that affecting her at the moment there's something extra present in her physical form okay um can confirm definitely has some sort of second soul in her body um there there's this spell that i've heard of um where you like put your soul into like a gem or or a container and then you can transfer it to another person and trade your soul in that container for theirs. Um, it's not exactly like that, but it's kind of similar. It kind of seems like she has a second person inside her, metaphysically if, speaking. When have we had that scenario, though? Maybe that's been the case this whole time? I, I don't know. Unless it was like your your axe, um, and when we got the sword from Dementliu, that's the only thing I can think of. Well, that whole place was a curse. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, we watched her give the blood, or she gave part of herself to the giant robot man and the work that must be done, right? And wasn't, that's true. didn't his daughter... That makes Go missing, a lot more or he sense. was trying to he was trying to resurrect her, right? Right. Yeah. And there was that whole room that was like a study that I'm pretty sure that we all went into at the very end that had like the it was a grand room at the very end that had the portrait on the wall. Am I misremembering things? Because it's been so long. <laughs> I mean, you're remembering I think it that's perfectly, right. actually. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Without notes. <laughs> I remember I was just playing to my intelligence. Oh, <laughs> Which is oh I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> the wise I remember. That's, yeah. I was, like, uh, was worried I was pulling it out of nowhere. Um, yeah, that's I the think only that it would be thing. good for us to talk to another wizard who has a bit more experience than me about this. Um I think I need to go pay Kaladek another visit. Kaladek, Cholodek. A, a passing sailor goes, shh, don't say that name. He can hear you. <laughs> and then keeps walking. That's I'm going to ask point. him to come to the ship. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Does he make house ship calls? House Not boat? really, no. Boat house. Oh. No, we'll, we'll, we'll have to go to him. But that's okay. I wanted to go talk to him anyways. Okay. Do you need Nene to go with you? She's really good at stabbing stuff. We uh, stand to point. stab him. I, well, I don't stuff. think I'll need him to be stabbed, but if Could be she other wants things. to come with me, she's more than welcome to. I um, at this Elena moment, the... <laughs> <laughs> um, at this point in the conversation, the um, door is going to open back up. The hat is now on Mariah's head, and she's got her coat mm -hmm. on. And she closes the door behind her and locks in and says... Um, apparently in this scenario, I still need to eat. So, um, I'm going to go deal with that discomfort and, uh, then I'll come back. So, um, recommendations? 
Uh, uh, there's a there's a great he, tower, and the guy who lives there makes some really good um, goulash. Highly I recommended. Mean, there's, there's pretty good seats nearby. <laughs> that is a deception check if I Yes, it absolutely <laughs> is a deception check. That's where we're going for lunch. Four. I mean, actually, some of us were going. <laughs> um. Well, four, is, four are we going to go on a reservation? Na- is passive insight, or should I roll against that DM? It's usually passive insight, so... All right, so um, the 13, yeah. That seems um, a little fishy, that... Um, yeah. I mean, it's a port town. Everything is fishy. It's fine. Fine, I'll just follow my nose, and I head off down the gangplank. <laughs> oh, watch out. Everything <laughs> smells we, bad here. Bye. Do we just let her go alone? Can we trust well, her I mean, to go alone? I don't trust her to find her way back, but I don't think there's any harm in her going to do stuff other than she's going to get lost. And then we just have to ask people for the weirdo. Or we could just be nice and ask people for our captain because they'll recognize her. They just won't know. Oh, does she have our money? She doesn't have my money. I know. (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll all work under the assumption that everyone has their cut at this point. I'm just imagining (laughs) that she's like put like big bags of gold in her on her belt and she's just like wandering on the streets. I do have a bag of holding, guys. (laughs) Oh, don't ruin it. We like our vision better. <laughs> not jingling the down the streets. Today. No. Jingle, jingle, I, jingle. I am not. Well, why don't we this send time. why don't we send Nene to keep an eye on her? Okay. Or we'll go see That's, the wizard. Seems like a good idea. Good luck, Nebe. I'll tr- I'll trail her. I'm gonna go okay. speak to Dagan. Are you um uh Ineris, are you st- trailing her stealthily or just yes. following? Okay. Stealthily. Go ahead and make Make your stealth check, and Prion, you said you're talking to Dargan. Dargan, yeah. I have obviously, expertise. So obviously, the captain's a bit. Is that a sixteen? Sixteen. It's a bit crazy right now. I but see you. She's gone for she's gone for lunch. We'll resolve she, that in a second. Yeah. And when she comes back, <laughs> if she tries to take the ship off and tells you to sail somewhere, you make an excuse. To not go anywhere until we're back. It's really that bad, huh? Aye. She's not dangerous, as far as we know. But we're going to go and get some advice. He kind of looks between the four of you, or the three of you that are still on the ship. um, And kind of looking for affirmation from you, Melvin, and from you, Tilis. Oh. Okay, all right. Um, well, honestly, there's a crew that's helping patch the hull anyway. They're going to have to take some planks out below the waterline. You don't want to be sailing at that time regardless. So I'll just make sure that they do all of those before we wrap up for the night or something. She right. should be docked for at least a couple of days. So I will be back for way before then. Mm. I hope. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir Dargan. <laughs> Fuck that! <laughs> and he turns around and <laughs> continues his uh, uh, ship work. Um, nice to know some stuff doesn't change. <laughs> and uh, Anaris, you are following wizard. Mariah through the alleyways, and yes. um, that sucks. I don't I have know. expertise. I don't know how she uh, <laughs> reacts to that. I um, see her tailing me out of the corner of my eye, but I don't say anything for the time being. Okay. So you head off into the city of Salt Marsh, which you have never visited before, followed by the Drow Cleric, as the rest of you go to see the wizard. Um, we'll pause right there, take a quick 10 minute break, uh, five, 10 minute break, just a short one, and we will be right back and pick up with the rest of this conundrum. Um, those of you watching, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's so fun to have you here. We are going to do a giveaway at the end of the stream. So tell your friends, bring everyone back for the second part of the session. And, um, we'll be doing that giveaway just around 10 o'clock ish, um, exclamation mark giveaway if you hadn't already, but, uh, yeah, we'll just take a quick five, 10 minute break. We will be back soon. Don't go anywhere. (laughs) Welcome back to this stream, which is in fact not math. 
though we will occasionally add some numbers and subtract some numbers. However, we will never multiply, divide, and fuck logarithms. So yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> unless it's casting haste, then we have to multiply our speed. You do it yourself. Oh. <laughs> I'm not doing that. But it's by two, right? So that's just adding something twice. Which is just like or, exponents. Which is which is also trying. logs. Watch him second guess himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right. Math wrecks us all. It does. <laughs> in the end. Um if you if you are just tuning in, the session started as uh, after a, the arrival to Salt Marsh, the arrival home and the departure of Nether, and then a strange occurrence as Mariah went to sleep, and in her place, a woman named Corinne woke up and poured through Mariah's notes as fast as she could, but has now been discovered by the crew. They are suspecting something is amiss with Mariah. The rogue cleric Inaris is tailing her now through Salt Marsh as the other three crew members are <clears throat> excuse me are headed to speak to the wizard Keledek Keledek the Unspoken in order to hopefully find some solutions to this bizarre problem so that brings us back to Salt Marsh Mariah or who's that? Corinne, where do you go when you leave this, uh, when you head down the uh, gangway off of Pixie's Fury? Um, so if I recall correctly, if I'm referencing the map that's on my screen right now, our dock is near where it says Prime Water Manor, correct? Yep, it's just the one right to the north. Delightful. Um, so I think what I will do here, if this town follows any sort of... Um, I don't know, typical tendencies or logic as they sometimes do. Um, I will simply make my way down the main thoroughfare, um, go as far as I can, and then um, kind of just see where lots of people are going. I'll sort of observe where, um, what, what buildings tend to attract the most people. And I'll just kind of take a peer inside, see what looks interesting, and I'll make an assessment from there. Okay. Um... Is there something in particular she's looking for? Food. Food. I'm hungry. Food. Yes. Okay. Um, in that case, the um, she will actually have to go quite a ways down south, kind of right here, what looks like to be a main hall, across from what are smelly but very lively markets. And finally, you see this, the snapping line. Hmm. Which seems to be a place where you can find food. A We're few cleaning. more well-dressed Salt Marsh residents are currently there enjoying an early dinner. All right. I'll go in and uh, approach the bar. Uh, good evening. Um, I suppose whatever is easiest for you to prepare that is um, nutritionally balanced would be perfect. Um... The owner kind of looks at you and is that code for claw wine? No, I, I am speaking quite plainly. Thank you. All right. Well, here's the bottle and she uncorks a bottle and hands it to you and I'll mm -hmm. get the rest of that going for you. Uh, welcome back, by the way. Thank you. Uh, how are things here? Is there anything interesting? Anything new? Uh, it's no, not really. It's good now. Um, you know, my sister's part of the town guard. They've been a couple of them have, have, have come back, but most of them are now doing well patrols way out near the mines since Solmore has got the, uh, the, the town security covered with his people. Um, it's kind of strange. They're mostly just camping, bivouacking out there, but. I don't know. Got to trust him. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. I'll go get that. Uh, I'll go get that food. Thank you. 
All right, she turns and leaves. Daenerys, you see, obviously, Mariah duck into the tavern. I will <clears throat> attempt to, as stealthily possible, I don't know if I want to go in, just see me come in the door. I will go around. I'll try to keep an eye on her through the windows and crouch down in an alley. Okay. Well, uh, Corinne, you've noticed Inaris follow you here, but Inaris, mm -hmm. you can now repeat a stealth roll to try and break. Correct. I have profic I have expertise in this. I better roll well. Come on. Damn it. 17. It's still not enough. <laughs> 17. <laughs> you see me looking through the window like. <laughs> like that drow white hair kind of <laughs> glitters in the lamplight outside. <laughs> I, I pull out my book and uh, mutter to myself under my breath as I write. The drow keeps following me. She seems intent on watching my every step. It's not clear to me whether she is to be avoided or whether she has information that I need to solve this puzzle. More thoughts on this later. Hmm. All right. Uh, they bring you some food and it's rustic. But mostly tasty. Do you drink the wine? I, as I'm waiting for the food, um, I will uncork the bottle, take a sniff, and then small taste. It's a little salty with a faint sweetness, almost like crab meat, mm. and a sort of musty nuttiness to the body that reminds you, actually, of a Dementlius sherry mm. in a way yeah. very confusing <sighs> well better not drink any of that put that to the side put the cat back in the bottle okay uh, uh she comes back to check in on you a moment oh i'm i'm sorry is that is was that corked is that a corked bottle or is oh, it no no no, no. i turned? got it i got it it's fine it's fine i no I'm not having you drink bad wine. Don't worry. I'll get you another bottle. And she takes it oh, off oh. the table and then uh, uh, pops open another one and sets it in front of you. There you go. Don't. You've done enough for us. No need to. No need to thank me. She turns around and goes back into the kitchen. <clears throat> okay. Looks like I'm not getting through this scenario without. <sighs> for the science, Corinne. For the science, Chuck. <laughs> Okay. Mariah's metabolism will keep you from getting poisoned. <laughs> but <God. laughs> make a um, constitution saving throw. More for the mental effects on Corinne's ability to um, function while severely intoxicated. Uh, 19 plus 1. 20. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, you are sufficiently buzzed. Though... Not quite tripping over stools drunk. Like that one time that I broke into father's liquor cabinet. Anything Before else you'd it got like bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to do besides have your meal? Um I will um I, I kind of just very um pleasantly observe my surroundings as I eat and um drink some more of the claw wine. Um, as I have now noted, it is called. Um, when I'm done with the meal, I will ask um, the bartender again. Um, just, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, you mentioned something about soldiers um, being posted out near the mines. Have they, uh, has any specific concern been indicated to them or are they just sort of sitting? That does seem a little odd. Well, they're hauling a lot of silver out of there. Um, there have been some reports. Well, you, you know, you guys found those. I heard, I maybe shouldn't say, but I, I heard, you know, through the grapevine that you all found those um, 
Zentarum types, you know, with the tattoos and the dagger symbols. So they've been worried about some bandit operations nearby and decided it'd be better if the militia, the, well, the, the town guard was more out there and Solmore said he'd take care of the interior security and honestly, these guys kind of freak me out a little bit that their weapons, I mean, there's kind of town guard carries a great mall. I mean, that's just a that's a weapon to ugh, do some mm. nasty things. I don't know. That does seem a little excessive for a town of this size. Maybe, you know, if, if we were to be somewhere that had a castle and um, required, um, you know, a, a garrison of some sort. Um, but yes, that does seem a little odd. And I quickly write that down. <laughs> Um, thank you for a very pleasant meal. And I um, just reach into the pouch and grab out a handful of coin and put them on the table, um, probably overpaying. Yeah, I'm not definitely. paying attention. Yeah. Uh, her eyes kind of go <laughs> wide. Um, and I just get up and say, have a nice, nice evening. She just kind of stands there staring at the pile of gold as you move and... Um, Immediately squatting outside is the form of Inaris as you leave the inn. I look down at her. Well, if you're going to follow me, you might as well make yourself useful. <sighs> and I just slowly <laughs> stand up. <clears throat> uh, yeah. <clears throat> so my understanding is from this note, and I reach out and I hold the piece of paper that you had <laughs> sent underneath her <laughs> eyes door. We are confidants, correct? Mariah and I were. You? Uh, not so much. I don't know you. Interesting. The, I what's what's your passive perception, by the way? I hope it's a hundred. Like <laughs> it's a fifteen. <laughs> okay. Um. Probably. You probably catch a little bit of something muttered under her breath as she sort of turns away and like looks pensive for a moment. These constructs are oddly self-aware. I must make note of this. Anyway, what um, is your? What is your name? My name is Mariah, Captain Mariah Nerdress. No, no, your actual name. My name here, I sort of gesture towards Saltmarsh, is Captain Mariah Nerdress, and you are Inaris. It's quite obvious, the notes about your description and everything. Anyway, um... Let's what is your name dock, out, shall we? What is your name outside of here? If you want to be my confidant and I yours, we must trust one another. <sighs> All right, fine. <sighs> Clear we're going to have to game the system here a little bit. Um, I am Corinne, which I feel like you should know but do I, I know? know? Maybe. <laughs> Mr. 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 Hat, do I do I know Corinne? Do I remember Hatt. the name? <laughs> um it was discussed. It, the um most a lot of the excuse me, paintings that you guys saw beneath um the inventor's home were labeled as Corinne. Um so Yes, putting that together, you also know that the mother of, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the woman who you met, um, was named Corinne as well. Adelaide. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I make note of that, but I don't, I don't. My face doesn't reveal anything as I just listen to her. Or, sorry. Um, it wouldn't have been the mother. It's the aunt. Sorry. Of, uh, yeah. Corinne. So, 
Corinne von Bierk. Um, I suppose, having satiated myself, we should head back to the ship. I have a few more calculations that I would like to make. Um, and you can tell me more about this statue situation. Does that sound all right to you? As long as you can help me deal with it without telling the others, yes. Whatever I need to do to solve this. Amazing. I think we've, uh, I think we'll get through this situation just fine. Right. Now, I must ask you one more question as, as we begin to head down the street. Um, is it just you who is aware or are your other compatriots and those around us, are they aware of their status as well? Uh, currently, it's just myself and possibly Talise. Possibly, Talise. Are you sure? Yes. You're sure that it's a maybe? It's not a one way or the other sort of situation. It's sort of a gray area. Yes. That's a little concerning. I'm, I'm, I'm working on her. I'm working on her. It, it, it takes time to become more self-aware. Wait, you are operating that upon her? Yeah. This is deeply uh, concerning. When, when, when I became oh. self-aware, I, uh, I immediately thought I should make my friend self-aware as well. Interesting. Maybe we should run through some diagnostics when we get back to the ship, shall we? As long as there's ale involved, I'm down. <coughs> Sounds love. Actually, I have this bottle that is ha sort of um, half finished. Would you like to finish this? Is that the claw wine? That stuff is disgusting, but no, I it's, it's still it alcohol. I drain it. <laughs> She's still okay. talking and I'm draining. All right. And you guys head on back to the ship. Um, the rest of you without, uh, head the short distance to good old Keledex Tower. Don't say his name. The narrator can say what he wants. <laughs> Walking up to it, you see the stones magically appear in the water, having already been granted admittance before. So if you'd like walking up, the door kind of clicks open and swings open for you on command as you move, as you head towards the entrance. <laughs> Heading up, to the study, you see the tall, imperious form of Keledek, the unspoken, the Wizard of Salt Marsh. Seven feet tall, at least, closer to eight feet tall. His turban red with a bright sapphire um, joining it in the center of his forehead uh, makes him almost look even taller. And without Barely turning to you, um, he is, um, he is busy working over, um, an alchemical set. Seems he's brewing a potion of some sort, and he barely turns to you. Ah, uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you, um, <clears throat> I, I, we have a little bit of a, a problem. Before you start, but... is Mariah here? That's kind of what we're here to talk to you about. Really? It's kind of unclear. Um, She's not dead, some... is she? No, no, no. Um, but... <sighs> Do you know the spell... Um, uh, ma magic Jar, I think it's called? He kind of freezes in place. Turns off the burner that's bubbling under one of the agents. Puts a cork on another thing and kind of... Uh, and then sets aside <laughs> the vial he was about to pour into another little beaker. And then turns around and gives you a very intense glass glance. 
So, I don't think she's been affected by Magic Jar per se, but um, she is... Suddenly this morning she started acting really weird and um, didn't know any of our names. We introduced ourselves as each other and she didn't correct us. Um, Melvin, and she... you are a scholar. Speak mm -hmm. to me with some measure of intelligence, boy. Yes, Melvin, come okay. on. Okay, um, I think that she may be under some sort of effect that has given her a second soul within her body, and that soul has taken over her personality. Ah. But I don't know how to undo it. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Magics that attach themselves to souls. Difficult. However, I am to understand that you solved something similar for your friend here. And he glances towards Prion. Yeah, um, that was... we. Well, he found a cursed weapon. Um, we just broke his connection with the curse and removed the weapon from his person and that, that solved that issue. But it doesn't seem that this is related to an item that we've recovered, so. Brion, I... what did it feel like when you were beset by the weapon? I didn't feel much different apart from anger. And during battle, I need to use the axe instead of my weapon that I'm trained in. <clears throat> Despite this being foreign, did it feel like yourself? Aye, but just a lot more angrier. Curses operate on a more subtle frequency than the magics you and I are adept at manipulating. A powerful enough severance to that connection may give Mariah the space she needs to return to from wherever she's been shunted to. If your hypothesis is correct. Talisa mentioned about the time that we were in the Mentia, where she, she had to give her blood. Hmm. Yes, yeah, she ended yes, up. Yes, the cause a of this of is quite intriguing. What is that, you said? Well, she had to give. She sacrificed some of her blood, but it's. I'm worried that she gave part of her soul, and so she blood made a is a common commodity. Yes, sh but it's, it's things. I can hear be what you're saying. Blood a, yeah. is a common commodity, but it can be more. Perhaps she offered more. Yeah. Or perhaps she walked away with something extra. Right. She made an perhaps exchange. Perhaps the valves. Didn't know. Were not properly structured. Perhaps a backflow allowed something to escape with her. This is very intriguing. You didn't happen to see a teleportation circle there in Dementlia, did you? The DM, did we? <laughs> I, we I, 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 as a player, don't remember. <laughs> no. That's what I don't. I don't think so. Uh, no, we didn't. Well, that's a pity. The solution... Well... You may need... a bit of extra... well... power to the spell, but Melvin... 
if you deploy magic upon Mariah that would remove a curse, use something to amplify its effects, it may hurt her body just a bit, but it may shock her system, so to speak. In fact, I'm told if a Someone is suffering from heart issues. A shocking grasp to the chest will actually stop their heart, but it has a chance of restarting again. So with Mariah, if you remove the curse and, well, sever both souls from the body, and somehow call her soul back first. We'll return to her. The method by which to excise the passenger. Well, that is another matter entirely, and I'm sure quite more complicated. So. Okay. Potentially, that's something that you and I could do. Certainly. At least part of it. <laughs> Theoretically. So the first bit, at least. I, I don't know if that would be a permanent so let solution, let me put it though. this way. <clears throat> well, I will look for the permanent solution. But in the meantime, Mariah is lost somewhere. If your theory is correct. When you do this, they will be cast back within her body in a place, well, hard to understand for any of us who haven't been there. But then it's going to be a foot race for Mariah and this interloper. Whatever you can do to give Mariah the advantage to cross the finish line first into consciousness, you should do. To put it pedantically, metaphorically. Um, th that makes sense. Okay. We could do that. We can do that. We'll do it. We'll get it. We'll figure it out. It's Mariah. We'll figure it out. <sighs> um. Do you still have the liar's dust? Oh, uh, yes, I, I do. Good. Well, some of it, at least. Use, use some of that. It should help. Mm -hmm. And... If you give me some notice where you're traveling, I should be speaking to Mariah about this, but I know you are her confidence. Confidants. Give me some notice... Gellin's business is going underwater has left me somewhat in short supply. The local governments are not so understanding where research is concerned. Is there anything else you need? Um, I was actually wondering if I could take a look at your your spell offerings. For, for, a, for a fee, of course. Hmm. Your friend is being possessed by another soul and you'd like to pass through my spell book? I, I'm a quick study. That's, that's a fair point. Hmm. Maybe I should come back for that. <laughs> Perhaps. No, I, I, I think, think she's that's... the only one who knows how to procure some of the things I need. I, no, I think that'll be everything then. Um, was that everything? Did we have something else, Prion? Um, that was pretty much it. But I do still have that axe. I was gonna sell it to the uh, to the merchant, but I don't know if it's something that maybe you may be more interested in. A Obviously, cursed it's still axe. Cursed. Aye. Perhaps. Will you leave it here with me? Aye, sure. 
Good. I'll see what use I can make of it, if any. I won't damage it. And I he reaches you. out his hand for it. Yeah, I hand it over. All right, he takes it. Turns on the burner again under the potion that he was working on. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye. Remember. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. She needs to beat the other soul to come forth. At least to temporarily beat whatever's happened. And how do we give her incentive? Put out a, a crate full of owl, some wine, what? A crate gift? full of what? I mean, Ooh. you want us to entice her back into her body or give her an advantage to do so, but how? How do we do that? You're off to a good start. You know her. I, I think we can figure this out. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the information. I appreciate it. Yeah. But this is a soul we're talking about as well. Friendship. There are things that. Well. Call to her a soul, not just. The Mariah that she shows to you. Now go. Have a good day. And you can hear the door kind of slam open downstairs and you get the hint. <laughs> Run away. Returning to Salt Marsh, or to um, the Fury, it's now becoming nighttime. It's been a short day, but um, you slept for a good portion of it. Uh, whoops. They are just about to light the lanterns. The Pixie's Fury is in no place to sail at the moment. Much to um, much to under repair. And you all can be at the same place. Your next step is up to you. Mariah and Eris, you've just arrived back at the ship about an hour ago as the rest of the crew rejoins. Um, I I do my very best to get uh, Inaris to get me back on the same page about who's who. Do you... Because I, I indicate that I, I feel like there is some sort of error. Because something just didn't line up about that whole situation. So... will Do you clear that up for me or not? <laughs> She's going to try. She's trying to gain her she's trying to gain her trust. So the only way to do that is to give her some information. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be try to be careful and uh she won't give away too much valuable information. Yeah. Um and as as we talked during this hour that the others are not present, I do attempt to assist her with this matter of how does one lift a um a large stone statue, or presumably large stone statue, out of the ground, it will require a lot of pulleys. Or out of the ocean. A lot of pulleys. But with enough simple machines, you can really make anything work. But where do we even get these simple machines? Well, it's you gonna take them. some... Oh! Anybody want a free dog? <laughs> not a small dog. That's not a dog. It's a rat. <laughs> you get enough rope, some wheels, um, probably need um, a whole host of different uh, sizes of both woodcut and metal, um, but I'm sure we could just whip something up. Where do we get this? We don't even have that sort of coin. That's also going to, everyone's going to notice. The that whole point is to be kind of on the, look into my belt pouch. <laughs> 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 Ah, I forgot. You do have captain's money. That's different. Well, I saw uh, I saw my calculations on the matter. It does seem that all of the money would just, was distributed evenly. You have your own capital. You expect me to spend my own coin on this? It's your job, is it not? 
I don't even get paid for it. I get an extra well, week or so of not running. Great. Do uh, you hold your life at any value? Not really. Being a half breed is not that great. <sighs> Fine. I mean, if, if, if you despise your life so much, then what's the point of taking the job? Fine, fine. We'll get the things. We'll do the thing. Build the crap. Let's just get this shit over with. Wonderful. Now, if it is a statue of a certain uh, density, then we might run into some problems out on the ocean. But here's how we might be able to solve that. And I start <laughs> diagramming. <laughs> I'm listening and taking notes and be like, you're, you, you're going to have to do this. I can't do this. You're going to have to do this. I don't even know what this means. Mm. Your Melvin is a wizard. I'm sure he has some spells that could be cast to um, rectify this situation. Gods know magic makes everything easier. Right. But that would also we would also have to tell Melvin what we're doing and in detail because he asks a lot of questions. This is a full ship job, is it not? And he is a yeah. member of the crew, therefore he must go on the job and therefore he must be involved in the process of lifting a statue out from under the water, yes? Uh, yeah then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Well, I, I, I uh, yeah. Wonderful, we're on the same page. Amazing, yes. Sometime around this time, the rest of the comrades return from their trip to the wizard. So when are you gonna get that powerful, Melvin? I, I don't know. I I got to do a lot more studying. He's been a long, around a lot longer than I have. Hey, do you want to be that powerful? He's not very nice. Oh, I think he traded being, his nice for power. Being powerful doesn't have any bearing on what kind of person you are. Exactly. Mm. That's correct. Mm. Anyone can be powerful with enough study, of course. And that's why we're good friends, Melvin. Oh, we're friends? Oh, that's great. Of course he we are. He flips through his book and starts scribbling in an early page in his notebook. <laughs> oh, shit. What have I Thrain done? fumes off screen. <laughs> <laughs> Status updated. Ooh, like. <laughs> Prion really liked that. <laughs> um... Oh, Fallout. While we are walking back, I will. We will be discussing um, mm -hmm. how we can potentially do this. Um, and I'll say, well, I have I have this new spell that I haven't used yet that um, can put someone into a, a catatonic state. Uh, okay. That might help, um, but we, they have to be willing. So we're gonna have to convince whoever is in Mariah's body right now to let us do that to her. Um, but that, that should make the process of the remove curse and stuff easier. Um, also, if we have the ability to protect from good and evil, that might also help. Um, I can do that. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I think that would be a good start. Who do I use it on? Um, I, unclear. I would think Mariah, but I don't know how to specify the real Mariah. Maybe yeah. cast it on her after the remove curse, but before the the feign death ends, to give her protection from the invading spirit. Hmm. Well, does it give her protection from the invading spirit? It, it, theoretically, it should. If this person mm -hmm. is, well, we think dead, right? Then their spirit would be considered undead, I guess. I don't know. This is a little outside my wheelhouse, but I'm, I'm making educated guesses. Okay, so it's the convincing part that I'm worried about. Um. Well, 
I could attempt to charm her, but Mariah's oh. always been really good at resisting those, so I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah. I mean, I don't we know could how much if... of Mariah's power she has. We could see if Nene's found out anything, too. If she spent That's the whole true. day tracking her, she might have seen something that could help us. I don't I don't know. Sometimes she notices things. All times. <laughs> yeah, oh. I, I think it's better if we try to convince her with words first, and if that fails, I can magically charm her or attempt to. Okay, so let's say that part goes well. And we knock her out. Um... Then, do I zap her? No, you'll cast Remove Curse, but you'll use, and I pull out the bag of liar's dust, you'll use a little bit of this with your Remove Curse to give it a little okay. extra potency. Okay. Uh, Why were you a bit smiling of damage, when you said zap her? That I like zapping sense. things. I don't care who or what I'm zapping, I like zapping things. This is our captain, our friend we're talking about. I mean... I wouldn't be zapping her, her. I'd be zapping the thing. And, you know, it's still her body. We're... Well, I can heal her. <laughs> I can fix it. And then plus, th plus, I mean, we were just told that we might have to damage her body to get her back. That was part right. of the conversation. I think he was talking about the liar's dust. Okay. Specifically. Okay. Um, it always gets messier before it gets cleaner. <laughs> I just I'll I'll wait and I'll zap her. Let's just use fire. Away. Let's burn everything down. What could go wrong? Fireball. <laughs> just fireball. <laughs> Always fireball. <laughs> um, I don't have that spell. I think we should also use her her uh, violin to try to draw her spirit back to her body once all of that has happened. Um, I don't know what else we could do. I guess we could try to get Nether involved, but Nether's uh, pretty busy, so... We oh. could mention Nether and maybe... Like... Mm. Exactly what I was going to suggest. Maybe mention okay. that Nether's in danger. Yeah, but... You know, she, she needs to be around to help in case something happens to Nether. Yeah. She can't help us celebrate when Nether comes back if she's not with us. And Nether's coming back. That's just going to happen. That's true. Yeah, even the the ghost dog agrees. <laughs> yeah. We should get a cat. Okay, get rid I of all agree. These rats. Or a big, or a giant dog that you can ride into battle. I'm a big proponent of a boat cat. You can I have boat dogs. Don't. I have three. <laughs> Take them. A boat cat would be really good for health and safety, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a sarcastic way. Um. Okay, so we knock I her think out. We have a plan. Yeah. Remove curse with the liar's dust. Immediately after that, um, we cast the protect. Mm -hmm. And are we gonna? Can anyone play the violin? How do we involve the violin? We can't just say, "Here's your violin." <laughs> We can say come um, back or I'll break your violin, but I don't I've think she'd appreciate that. I've never tried to play the violin, but I can cast Mage Hand, and it can <laughs> manipulate objects, so maybe it can play the violin. I've never actually tried before. I, I don't know if that works. I think we just um, use Nether. <laughs> I think Nether's the best bet, and the fallback is if you don't show up, we're going to have someone try to play your violin. <laughs> we could also just put the violin in our hand. Oh, I like that. That's good, too. That's a good one. Okay. So, one last time, so that I don't get excited and mess up the plan later. We're going to knock her out. It, I could fix it. <laughs> I could fix it. So, we'll knock her out without electricity. Then, remove curse, which I found in my spell list that I do actually have prepared. And... Then we'll have the violin in her hand when I cast Remove Curse. Yeah, we, we can do that after we knock her out. Because That's as fine. soon as I cast Remove Curse, it's then that's when the race starts to get back to her, but right? More importantly, right? you mentioned that she's got to be willing at some point. What point is that? That's the beginning. That's 
the point. That's that's the first step. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, I, I do have Charm Person prepared today, so if it really Can comes we... down to it, we hope that she f is could affected by my magic. Like, could we wait until she's already asleep and then she's, like, willing could you to, not use to your go unconscious for your charm spell? I don't know if that's a thing that I can do. Let me check. <laughs> I know someone's like, hmm. <laughs> Let me zap her. <laughs> Let me at her. <laughs> I, it, technically, it doesn't deal damage unless the spell deals damage. I don't know how Peter's going to rule that for remove curse necessarily. but I just want to zap her for shutting that door in my face. <laughs> how dare you. But it is empowered with disruptive magic. Any the next spell I cast, so. Mm. Who knows? I think it, I think it's worth a try at least. Also, I don't I don't think that being asleep is the same thing as consent. So <laughs> I, I kind of doubt that when you that word would it work. that way. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was wondering if someone was going to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> I feel awful now. Oh. Wait a minute. You said about <laughs> sending her to sleep. Well, that's not going to work. I was, well, I, I was thinking we could maybe wait until she was No, asleep. it's it's not then... putting her to sleep. It's putting her into a catatonic state. Into knocking her out. Right. Okay. Bada boom. It, it, it's a state that is indistinguishable from death. Hmm. It lasts about an hour. Okay. Well, I trust so, you, Melvin. So we cast everything, we do all the things, and we wait an hour? And we see who mm -hmm. comes out the other side? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. 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 What could go okay. wrong? So many things. Would Wait, you so like me to like list any, them? It's like any day then. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me press F5 first. F for respects. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Control Z. When in doubt, Control Z. It's fine. Save scum helping you? Mariah. That's <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> F4. <laughs> Quick save. Okay. Okay. I think we have a plan. Do, okay, right. okay. So the only thing we don't know is how to do the very first step. We're going to play it by ear, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll talk to Nene next time I see her, and I'll see if maybe she found something that'll help, if she figured out something or saw something. As you guys return to the ship, um, there's a watch set. Most of the work is done for the day. You see the glow of light emanating from the captain's chamber, and you hear the... Mariah's voice, though in a different tonal world, uh, the way she talks, very different. And you hear the occasional groan and grunt from an heiress coming from within the same cabin. Um, I think it, possibly at this point you might overhear me saying, um, you know, I really just don't understand because it seems that this is obviously the most important problem in this situation, but there's clearly not enough information available to me in the current circumstances in order to be able to solve it. So it must be a layered situation or maybe even a red herring. This might not be the issue at hand. What else has been problematic lately on the ship? Um, I'm still trying to get somebody's attention and... <laughs> yeah. Romantically? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, tell me everything. No, I give her all. I give her all the details. I get it. So, so I saved him. Yeah, it saved him. He can't talk, and he doesn't reciprocate outwardly. Well, there was one time he seemed kind of interested in dancing with me, and then that was just about it. 
no, wait, this isn't the sort of problem that father would said he's not interested in these sort of things. Um, never mind, never mind. Um, no, 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 we mind, we mind. <laughs> I'm giving you information. Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, uh, reveal away. It's part, it's part of part of part of the simulation. Yep. And about this point, the rest of you return to the cabin as well. Damn it! Ah, oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Prion, Melvin, and Talise, I say to each of you correctly. Welcome oh, back. Thank you. Yay, thanks. Hey. How was your meal? It was um, a bit rustic for my taste, but fresh ingredients, I can appreciate that. That's, that's a fair critique of this area's food. Fair. Oh, um... For what it's worth, um, apparently um, this um, Anders fellow has all of the uh, previous soldiers uh, bivouacked out near the silver mines. Um, and el- individuals in the town are concerned about individuals, guards within the town, wielding large maces. I don't know if that's useful to you, but I should probably pass that information along. They say what kind of guards? Oh, uh, Solmorn. Solmorn guards in the town versus outside of the town. Hide thugs, probably. Well, sure. Just. I don't know we, what's we useful knew here that, or not. Part, actually. Oh, I forgot. Great. I not part that. of the problem then. All right. Um, so we actually had a bit of a breakthrough while we were out um, around the town. Oh, um, delightful. At the tower, that doesn't serve food. <laughs> he has food there. It does if you ask nicely. He's right. just a little bit prickly about sharing. Anyways, yeah, um... Doesn't share uh, anything anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, he recommended that we do a bit of a, um... ritual of sorts. Um, he thinks that you might have information locked in your subconscious that you're not accessing currently, and he he recommended that we do a bit of a ritual to access that information. But you'd have to be willing for that to work. So it would require you to be put into an unconscious state for a bit. Well, that doesn't make any sense. The parameters of all these problems is that the information that is needed in order to solve them is present somewhere. It doesn't make sense that someone else is in Mariah's body. We just get past that point. Anyway, I have attempted to assess whether uh, this individual well, here, um, Anaris, has any information that I'm missing. Apparently, there's a love subplot here, but I don't think that that's the one that oh, requires I, I, I my attention. I think I see the confusion um, here, if, if I may. Um, the information is available to you, but it's locked in Mariah's subconscious, which you're currently suppressing. We need access to Mariah's subconscious, and in order to do so, we need to put you in into a temporary unconscious state so we can access her memories and access the information that we can then pass to you. Hi. The information is in Sending the me scenario. into a subconscious is simply booting me from the scenario. That doesn't make any sense. Well, Without no, no, the actual no, we, proper host, we won't be booting you from the scenario. We'll be we'll father. Be your construct is failing. I don't really see the point in trying to finish this out. It's clearly has full of errors. Can we just pull the plug on this? Yes. Can I we just pull person. the plug on this? Oh. <laughs> okay. What's the DC? Sixteen. Like, let me zap her. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a nine. Are you? Do you have resistance because of half elven oh. heritage? I do. Thank you. How and dare I you, Peter? Out of advantage. <laughs> I roll a nine. I have the zapper. Yeah. I saw that one coming. <gasps> I zap you. And now they're attacking me. Thank you. Okay. I just I try I try to push past. Um, to get to the dark. So you don't you don't know anybody's names, you frog. <laughs> <laughs> um so you see 
I stopped. Uh, Get your Breon. hands off of me. Rude. You're walking off with someone else's body that don't belong to you. This Take... isn't a body! Yes, it is. It is a body. Uh, can I ask a question? Well, can obviously, we, we, I have to listen to you, so sure. Calm down. In In your normal scenarios, what happens to your body... If you're injured. Nothing. Well, there usually isn't any injurious circumstances. I take out my pen knife and hand it to her. Can you prove that this is a scenario then? There have been no scenarios that require me to endure self-harm. That seems rather out of character. Right, you don't have to do much. Just a little prick of the finger. I'm not it sure helped. what that will prove. I'll take the pen knife and I'll slice my finger. All right. You take a point of damage. Corinne, it hurts. You don't recall the last time you really felt pain. And certainly you actually don't recall the last time you've seen your own blood. Not in your recent memory at all. Recent or distant, really. And you see it slowly dropping onto the wood floor, your own lifeblood falling. Now, whoever you are, let us help you. This isn't right. I drop the pen knife. I'm just back up a little bit, shaking and looking at my hand, I'm trying to sort of cover the let, fingers, let smear Elise, the blood away. Let Elise take care of that for you. Band-aid. <laughs> I got bloody do a band-aid. <laughs> she's not really hurt. She's she's fine. I... It's just a little boo-boo. She's an adult, pick up the pen whoever knife. she is. I could really hurt her, and then I'll take care of it, but this is fine. I pull my hand back. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're fine. W will you let us help you? Like, I promise that if you agree to let us help you, I will genuinely do everything I can to help you. I'm not going to try to pull any weird tricks or do anything against you. I, you I like Mariah. I want to help her and you're in there too. So I want to help you. Even after your little blab to the entire room, I still want to help you. <laughs> he surveys all of you. See, trying to seeming to look for something and not finding it. And she says very quietly, um, Is this a dream? I don't... I don't think so. No. We think we know what happened. When we were back in Dementia, Mariah gave some blood to help save your father. My father is fine. Mm, what it wasn't remember. at the time. I, sort of what do you he remember was, he was he was not well when we saw him my father's always had difficulties of a sort do you, do you know adelaide dm do i i can't actually remember where at the time where the timeline would fall on that adelaide would have been a fanciful one of the maybe you know an Adelaide in Dementlio mm -hmm. but you think it's maybe one of the names that your sister thought about using for her child and she was about to get married when you started feeling a little ill and weren't able to see her because of that I'm 
I don't know. We this... we helped Adelaide with um I don't know anyone or I probably know someone named Adelaide. I I they have Adelaide no Garnier. importance to me. And you remember your sister gushing about Lord Garnier, who she was to marry. At least 15 titles behind his name. She could not be happier. And yet, despite the stuffy verbiage, he was a vibrant, caring man. I I just want to go home. And we want to help you. Huh. Truly. For whatever it's worth, you have my word on that. <laughs> but to help you, we need Mariah. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but it is clear that she is a figure of importance to you. That much I can glean. So, um, um, what is it that you require of me to solve this problem of yours? Um, well, I would be casting a spell called Feign Death on you. It lasts for about an hour. It would put you into a catatonic state. Um, and then we will perform a ritual to try to get in contact with with uh, Mariah so that she can help us figure out how to get you home. And there, there may be a moment that you will need to let Mariah take over where you might actually need to make that decision to mentally step back. You'll you'll be there, you just won't be active. And then we can work with Mariah to try to find a way to send you back to where you belong with your family. You've been to Hi. Dementia. Mm -hmm. We'll be back been about to a my month. Father's home. Hmm? Your your father's son-in-law's home, technically. Though your father is still alive, so I guess it's still his home, but legally it had... It's confusing. But yes. The, the place where he resides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his lab. And the... The glass... Is that real? You guys remembered seeing a room mm. with a tank, a circular, like a sphere. Oh, yeah. And a body oh. floating inert in a frosted sphere of liquid. Oh, God. It is. Yeah. That. Yes. Don't make any decisions about my fate without asking me, all right? Your father was trying to help you, and we were trying to help mm. your father help you, which is why Mariah gave the blood. If I let Mariah come back, do not make any decisions about my soul and its place without asking me. Sure. That's very fair. Fine. I just nod. And one other thing as well. If you do ever find yourself coming back here instead of Mariah, just know that we're your friends and you can trust us. Yeah, just tell us. <laughs> you just have to be honest with us. 
We're not the bad guys. As I said, we tried to help your father and help you. Right. Well, problem solver, I say looking at Melvin. Cast away. Cast away. Archmage. Um, one last thing <laughs> before we do, and I pull out the letter that was tied to the ballista from Fitz von Vierg. And I hand it over. If you need more convincing, I think this should help. I uh, DM for me, uh, the player. Can you remind me of the contents of that letter? It's it's in Roll20. Is it? Oh. Yes. Um... It's titled Letter Tied to the Ballista. <laughs> Hey, hey. Ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The she will continue. read it. Um, given how short the letter is and how long she spends reading it, you imagine that she's sort of going over the words multiple times. And she eventually hands it back to you and just gives you a curt nod. Okay. You guys ready? Hi. Yes. All right, are you ready? Do what must be done. All right, I will begin ritual casting Feign Death. All right. This is a strange experience, Corinne, as these arcane runes are being drawn near your body. And... Melvin, what does the spell look like and what how does it what does the final piece before mm -hmm. putting her into this state look like? Sure. So I um draw a number of runes on the floor. Um and then the last piece is a uh, spell tag, which I write out on a piece of paper and stick to her forehead. Um and sprinkle a small a bit of dirt on to cast the spell. You just put a and yellow with... label on her head. <laughs> sticky, sticky <laughs> I like the idea of it just putting a little toe tag on and writing her name on it. <laughs> she just walks <laughs> oh, that's dark, sorry. Um, <laughs> but you, <laughs> you feel might be appropriate eventually. Finger on your forehead, and at some point it feels like more pressure is applied, but it's almost as if his hand and the sensation of his magic pushes through your face, pushes through your skin, your bones, and you feel it pushing your consciousness somewhere deep down, and you fall into blackness. Mariah's body falls limp. Prion, catch her. Yeah, I will do so. I thought we might have laid her down for that, but we didn't specify. Shit, I catch her. <laughs> Head broken, Mariah's dead. We said we'd help. <laughs> okay. And now I'll, I'll hand the um the liar's dust off to Teresa or to to Lise. Wow. It's mine now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then Talise is going to uh. I guess kneel down next to Mariah Corinne's body, assuming that we put her on the bed. And then um, Talise will put her hand uh, kind of like right on her sternum, on Mariah's sternum, and mutter a little prayer to Valkor to cast her remove Fucking curse grasp. with the <laughs> zip zap. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, roll two d six, please. Me. Yes, you. Me. Two d six. A nine. So Mariah, you see a uh, the body convulse for a moment as Mariah and Corinne take nine points of psychic damage, and there is this convulsing. And then suddenly her eyes shoot open. <gasps> her mouth opens, gasping for breath. And 
it looks almost like an empty vessel for a moment, breath, and a body trying to breathe something in. The eyes look around the room for a moment. Do you all do anything? I uh, grab the, uh, the the violin and put it in your hand. <laughs> I'll do okay. the protection versus evil and good. All right. So you cast that on her body. Inaris, Talise, do you do all do anything in this moment of limbo? I, I just call out for her. I just what do you say? yell her name. Okay. <laughs> Mar Mariah, come back, damn it. <sighs> Eloquent as always. <laughs> um, I will take over. Thank you, Nebe. Um, Mariah, if you're trying to come back, you know, we really miss you. And we just wanted to remind you, you know, that Nether is still out here. And we're hoping that she comes back. But she, it won't be the same without you. And she'll need you here to help her. And we need you here to help us. And if you could, you know, just make your way across that finish line and come back to us. Because, you know, if you don't, Melvin might play your violin and no one needs that. So just, you know, just come back here and, you know, come back, damn it. <laughs> I tried so hard. Come back. I'm going to activate Eyes of the Grave just to see if I see anything happening. Okay. Corinne and Mariah, you both have a moment feeling like the tide of an ocean is swelling behind you. You're running barefoot through shallow water, hoping not to catch your foot on something sharp beneath this black water. But only ankle deep you splash forward and the narrowest gap of something. Is it a doorway that's slightly open? Is it a path between rocks? You don't know, but it is the only light source in this blackness. Mariah, you come to it and suddenly <clears throat> something's in your way and you look and see a red haired woman looking at you face to face, beautiful green eyes. Corinne, you see the woman you've seen in the mirror and who you swear you've seen in your dreams a few times when you had those fleeting dream dreams on a ship. And then you hear feel something in your hand, something wooden in your hand. Your fingers move across four strings reflexively. And then you hear the voices of your friends. Damn it. <laughs> you hear the voice, Nether. Nether needs you. And you hear not the waves, not the swell of darkness behind you, but the freshness of the tide. And you swear you can hear your friends whisper in it, the whisper of Nether. And this woman with the red hair hears those things and kind of shakes her head and looks at you. The tear runs down her eye and she steps aside, falling into blackness for a moment as you tumble into the light and shoot awake in your bed, grasping your violin. Your finger hurts and your friends are standing around you, looking very concerned. Oh, God. How bad of a bender was it? Welcome back, Sleeping Beauty. Hey. Call me that again and I'll deck you. Mariah. Oh, well, she's back. <laughs> some part of you realizes 
that you've been gone for a bit and you comically remark about the bender part, but there's this unsettling feeling that you've lost at least a day of your life where you were not in your body, but your body aged and nonetheless. Part of you worries, was it a month? Was it longer? Was it a few hours? But there's this unsettling feeling that you have been separated from yourself and put in a closet somewhere far, far away where anything could happen to your body, your friends, and the world that you've helped build. Part of that fear, you instinctively reach to your hip. There's a sword buckle there, but it feels like a phantom limb. You used to have a different connection there. Some part of yourself from a day when you felt, well, proud of yourself in a way that you wouldn't even recognize now. A numbness at your hip that's, well, been ever-present, but you understand it on a deeper level now. Then your thoughts return to your friends and the room around you, and you fully return to consciousness. Okay. Seems we're not done there with the mentally air. Oh, shit. Did we get a ride along? Hi. Yeah. When you gave blood, that Corinth. Corinth? Corinth. 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 <laughs> I think we should help her. That girl. Yeah. Did did you did you like okay. did you like did you did you cross paths with Do her? Do not or remember something? anything. You even I kissed Melvin. Yeah, it was disgusting. I can tell by the look of his on his face that that's bullshit. Damn. Uh, yeah. We all know that Melvin would not have a clue what to do with a girl. <laughs> He has Brown. already been kissed once, but well, <gasps> we all know I intimidate him, so that wouldn't work. Yeah, last, I mean, last time that happened, it didn't end well for me mm -hmm. or any of the rest of us. Yeah. Well, don't alert Saray into your apprehensiveness, but what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. So nothing. we have a problem to solve, and we'll take care of it. Whatever. Um. Okay. Anyway, I. Uh, did I drink all my alcohol while I was gone, or is it still there? No. Yeah, it's weird. She um, didn't like drinking, so it's mm -hmm. probably there. Well, at least we have an easy way to tell when I'm not me. Yeah. That's but, sort of what gave it away. Yeah. It's hey, true. Captain, it's good to have you back. Pleasure is always mine. Do me one favor, yeah. though. I think. The next time you see Durgan, definitely call him <laughs> Sir. You've got to. <laughs> Whatever you say, Brian. Whatever you say. It, please do. <laughs> Definitely do it. More importantly, Nana, you were talking about someone that you were falling in love with. Who's that? Shut up. <laughs> it's it's sort of cross my arse and turn away. <laughs> no, it's Melvin. <laughs> Barf. I, uh, I get up 12? off. Um... Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I get up from wherever it is that Prion put me after I, you bet. I pass out and um, I you look bet. around the room and fuck I had everything in a place where I could find it damn it I know she, she made it, up. it clean she didn't it's drink terrible. and she sorted everything what oh fuck I'm never gonna the be worst able to find kind of guest here. I think she tabbed books and things too it's uh yeah, she, she said she was indexing. If you'd like, I can help you go through it and figure out what her indexing, um, uh, uh, what, what her, you know what, what her sorting. Unindex. It's fine. I, I appreciate all of you and I all, I love you all dearly, but I'm already overwhelmed by the number of you that are in my bedroom right now. So, um, let's, I start sort of like flay alarmingly shooing people <laughs> out. <laughs> to report, I love you, bye. Captain. We need to go back and see the wizard. He needs to speak to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sure, yeah. whatever. We can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We have to get a statue, too. 
What's this about oh, a yeah. statue? What? Yeah, Melvin, I'll tell you later. It's a thing. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll deal with it. I, Don't worry I about it. I haven't heard anything about this statue, but okay. I mean, I tried to, t I started telling people about it, and then this all came up, so I got sidetracked. Is it a problem that we can solve tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Perfect. Perfect. Bye oh, bye. Great. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Maybe you let's go. Wonderful. <laughs> um, trust me, I want to get a. Let's just go. Let's go find the guy. Shut up. <laughs> um, DM after sort of shooing everyone out of the room and closing the door behind them, I um, I'm gonna open one of the portholes and peek my head out and I want to look at um, the state of the night sky and I check whether or how similar it is to the state of the sky position of the stars when we were coming back from uh, Dementia and when we arrived. Yeah. Uh, looking up clear night, you can clearly see the stars. Thank goodness. Same season. The the stars are lying pretty much exactly where you would expect. Um, okay. A day or two at most is as long as you've been gone. I look out towards the um, Stone Island. How's it doing down there? It looks peaceful. And... For the moment, there's this sort of what? What color are Mariah's eyes? Uh, let me consult my picture. <laughs> um, dark red. Okay. There's a glowing light slowly pulsating above it. And you can see what looks to be one ship kind of diverting its way around the island, around the jagged rocks that are sometimes hard to see. But something comforting about it to you that feels homely, comforting to see. Um, I take note of that, and um, while I... It takes me a little while to sort of get the captain's quarters back to the state that I feel most comfortable with. But after that is completed, um, and once the sun has set in the sky, I will, um, in a very Mariah fashion, take my violin and one of my wine bottles up to the back of the ship. And I sit very precariously on the... Um, uh, railing on the back with my feet hooked through the bars and I vibe with the tide playing melodies and the that tide sort of come to me seems to vibe back the rest of you below deck hear that familiar sound of Mariah's violin echoing down through the wooden structure of the ship the whole ship seems to vibrate with that same energy and the tide itself lifts and falls gently rocking you all to sleep seeming to be beautifully in tune with your captain's forecastle ballad and we will pick up dawn the next day I think next time we play as Mariah, you go to sleep and hope that it's you that wakes up so that that um, feeling of unsureness nags at you as you close your eyes. Something to be solved another time. And that's where we will leave off for next time with a to-do list to act upon in our next session. So, yay, everybody! Yeah.